Hey everybody, Matt Car1877 here. Just got done watching that race in Pocono. And uh, going into this race, I will say there uh, was a lot of negativity. You know, it's Pocono. Everybody's like, oh, Pocono's the worst track on the, on the schedule. It's going to be the worst weekend ever when we have the doubleheader next year. Um, but if you look at not only the exciting race today in Pocono, uh, we have to look back at the last couple of years uh, in the July race at least. Now the June race the last couple of years has not been that exciting, but the last couple of years in July were pretty fun to watch. I mean we had last year which was a pretty fun race to watch. The year before that I believe in July was when Ryan Blaney passed Kyle Busch for his first ever career win. Uh, I believe that was in July. That could have been in the June race though. I have to check back up on that one. But everybody who talks a lot of crap about Pocono, you know, obviously it was horrible earlier on in the June. I mean, I liked it because I was a Kyle Busch fan, obviously, but overall, that race was a little bit uneventful, not a lot of action. Uh, maybe you might have been saying the first half of this race didn't have a lot of action, but uh, once we got later into the stages, that strategy plays out, and we have a lot of strategy that plays out at Pocono, uh, every uh, Pocono race. Uh, but I thought this race was interesting, so I can't, I can't say anything bad about that. Anyway... Uh, let's kind of talk about the results. Denny Hamlin gets his third career win of the season. Uh, Eric Jones finishing second. And Mark Truex Jr. finishing third. So he had one, two, three. Joe Gibbs uh, racing drivers. Kyle Busch had the best car today, uh, but just couldn't capitalize. Just the cautions that kept flying. They're going into the third stage. Just kind of messed him up there at the end of stage two. Once those cautions kept coming out, the stages and all that, uh, his strategy pretty much put him in a box and he really didn't have a shot to win after all that so a tough day you had the fastest car you didn't get a victory that's obviously disappointing uh, but I've mentioned Eric Jones who finished in second I've mentioned this multiple times this year I'm gonna say just one more time now Denny Hamlin with his third win of the year every Joe Gibbs driver out of all four of them have finished or have won at least three NASCAR races just this season Eric Jones has zero this year and he has one career win ever that came at Joe Gibbs Racing back at Daytona. I'm not going to say that's not a win, but that's a little bit of a wild card race. Uh, so if it's not looking too good for Eric Jones when you look at it, you know, win wise, he might not even be guaranteed into the playoffs, which is insane. Um, but man, just that uncertainty of will, will Eric Jones, will he find a ride next season at Joe Gibbs Racing? Certainly the questions, you know. Start, starting to uh, unfold. We will see next year, obviously, but, man, Jones, if he if he wants to seal the deal, get some wins, that's one way to guarantee he has a spot there next year. We've got, you know, Christopher Bell right down there. He's thinking, okay, I'm dominating in the Xfinity Series. Maybe move me up to Cup and see what, what I can do there. Um, but anyway, we had William Byron to finish in the fourth position. Pretty good uh, job for him, the highest finishing Hendrick Chevrolet. Uh, and then we had Kyle Larson finishing fifth, who was up front. Uh, on the final restart and then kind of got shuffled back and then came back up to the front and ended up finishing fifth. Uh, so that was interesting as well. Uh, and then we had Kevin Harvick. Probably one of the best cars. I still think Kyle Busch had the best car throughout the day. Kyle Busch was just, you know, phenomenal. Uh, he even caught Harvick in the first couple of stages. He was just flying through the field. I thought he was the best, but once again got screwed up uh, with the pit strategies and all that. Uh, but Kevin Harvick was fast as well. I'd say second fastest car of the race. He was running up front. He actually led a whole bunch of laps today. Um, he did finish uh, finish six. Once again, got shuffled back with all the cautions and stuff. Uh, but Kevin Harvick, man, he had a heck of a car today. And definitely got to watch him going on in the weeks to come. Because, man, it's like once Kevin Harvick gets a win, he just starts winning a whole bunch. He got that win last week in New Hampshire. Uh, Semi-dominated today. I had a very good car. I'm not going to say the best, uh, but had a very fast car today in Pocono. Uh, so we'll see what he can do going into uh, the playoffs starting in just a few weeks. Jimmy Johnson finished 15th but did win stage one. I thought it was fun to me, funny to me uh, that it was about 10 years ago if Johnson won anything, if Johnson led a lap, uh, it'd be booze. Every, all you hear was booze. Uh, middle fingers would be going up kind of like what Kyle Busch is getting today. Uh, but no, when he won sta that stage, nothing but cheers. A lot of cheers coming from uh, the stands at Pocono Raceway. Um, 
So, hey, things are changing. When you start to get older and then, you know, uh, people start to look back at your legacy and say, well, he's done a great thing, and they, they start cheering for you. So it's it's kind of funny, and I think the same thing's happening with Kyle Busch. It's starting to kind of change. I'm hearing more cheers than boos when it comes to Kyle Busch winning now uh, than ever. I talked about a couple other guys. We had Brad Keselowski have a rough day to begin with. Uh, had a bat, uh, Actually had a flat tire, got up in the wall early, and then kind of had a horrible pit stop. Pit crew kind of screwed him up there. Uh, so that was rough for Brad Keselowski. And then we had Chase Elliott to have another another horrible week. Man, Chase Elliott and Elliott Nation's having a, a rough summer months here. Chase Elliott's just mechanical failures, wrecks, flat tire today. Uh, they just can't catch a break and another bad finish and really another DNF. I don't even know how many he's had in the last two months. Uh, but Chase Elliott's got a lot of DNFs here uh, over the last couple of months. So just another another rough day for uh, Chase Elliott. Uh, I want to talk about Ricky Stenhouse Jr. There was a little bit of contact made near the end of the race with him and Kurt Busch. Uh, Kurt Busch got turned around. It looked to me, I mean, I didn't see nothing intentional happen there. Uh, but then after that wreck, we had Ricky Stenhouse Jr. run into the back of the number one and kind of flat out wrecked Kurt Busch. He was already wrecked. I mean, he already had damage to the car, but uh, wrecked him a little more there. Hit, hit the back end of him, got him turned around. Uh, Ricky... I'm not the biggest fan of you, so I'm a little biased here because I'm a Kyle Busch fan, but you've, you've, you've made every driver in the field upset, uh, and you're making every fan in the stands upset, including me. Well, I'm not in the stands, but watching TV upset, including me, uh, and you're not winning. Uh, so when you put all those things together, something's wrong, and obviously it's his fault. He's wrecking every week. Last week it was Eric Jones that he had controversy with. This week it's Kurt Busch he's had controversy with. Uh, it's every week he's involved in a crash, and then it, there's controversy. It's different drivers that it's every week. Like I said, last week it was Jones. Today it was it was Bush. Um, when you've wrecked every field, every every driver in the field. Uh, multiple times now at this point and you run your mouth and run your mouth and then you don't win that's the thing if he was winning this would be completely different uh, but he's not winning I, th I think the blame's on you man I just Ricky Stenhouse you're just not looking good right now you're not winning and you're running your mouth um, that's just that's all I gotta say about you Ricky sorry man that's all I gotta say that's really all there is to talk about uh, for the race. We did actually get some information about the Pocono doubleheader coming up next year. Um, basically, the Sunday race is now guaranteed to be 350 miles. They're going to try to make the Saturday race that same length, but don't know 100% according to NASCAR. Uh, and also, the finishing order from Saturday, they'll, they'll do a qualifying session. That'll set uh, Saturday's race. But the finishing order for the lead lap cars will be reversed going into Sunday. So if you're the last car to finish on the lead lap on Saturday at Pocono, you will then be the first car. Uh, you'll be on pole for Sunday's race at Pocono. Just wanted to you know, kind of wrap that up, put that in there real quick. Anyway, that is it. Uh, I thought it was a pretty amazing race in Pocono. That's all I have to talk about. Next week we go to, I believe it's Watkins Glen. Uh, so uh, Watkins Glen, a road course. We're continuing this, I guess you'd call it northern uh, uh, swing here. Uh, we continue that next week in New York. It's Wagons Glen. It's probably going to be a little bit entertaining. Uh, but anyway, tune in for my video next week. Subscribe if you liked it. And I uh, once again, I have a Twitter account, same name as the YouTube channel. Uh, so that's it. If you're not first, you're last. And let's get rowdy.